The Sahabas, they used to make the halal easy. So what became hard? The haram. When we make the halal hard, the haram becomes easy. Mark my words, brothers and sisters. I'm talking to the parents. When you make the halal hard, the haram becomes easy. When you make the halal easy, the haram becomes hard. Open the doors for marriage, insha'Allah, and lower the dowry, and go in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah. There is a culture among the youth which I fear, and that is that they are turning away from marriage, and if they get married, they divorce very quickly. Brothers and sisters in Islam, do not let the idea of haram relationships get the better of you. A lot of youth, they come to me and they say, brother, I want to get married, but I need to, I need to get to know the girl. And the girl says, I need to get to know the guy. How am I meant to get to know them if I don't go out with them, if we don't have coffee together, like the West teachers? Brothers and sisters, let me inform you about something very important. You will never know your future wife or your future husband if you just go out together. You'll never know them. Take it from a person who's lived in a, in a country where people do this all the time. Because when you go out together, you are on your best behavior. You are on your best looks, the best cologne. The CK perfume is on you and she's got Versace and she's come out ready to meet you. She's probably looked at the, at the mirror and spent about half an hour practicing how to talk to you. And you as well, looking at every little hair on your forehead, every little hair on your cheek. This all fades away within about six months of your marriage. The only thing that's left is the character. You will never know the true character of this person until you meet them in their home. You go the Islamic way and you go and ask for their hand in marriage to their father first. A lot of youth, they come to me and they say, I need to get to know the, the girl first. And subhanAllah, how quick they are to jump on where? What do they jump on to get to know them? The internet. And messaging text. They start conversing. Are you interested in marriage? She's on the other side. She's got a username first, right? Let's chat. How did you know I was a sister? Oh, you know, I looked at your profile and you had some really good... I mean, I'm interested in that too. And let's get into this conversation. And he comes up to me and says, Brother, brother, it's in, the, it's, it's in the interest of marriage. You know, my intentions are pure. Your intentions are pure? You're doing this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? But you're doing it your way? What do you think? You're making up your own religion now. So they chit-chat and they chit-chat and they chit-chat, right? First they attract each other. Then they meet each other. Then they look at each other. It's all good to know, right? They haven't touched. Then they want to touch. Then the touch turns into something else. And then finally, they fall in love. In love. Oh, if you only knew. Brothers and sisters, you don't know what love is. This is not love. This is lust, lust. The girl is thinking, oh, how romantic he is. He's like uh, that movie I watched the other day, Twilight Saga. <laughs> the boy, he thinks he's Rambo. Walking, you know, tensing his muscles. She's thinking how romantic he is, walking me through the garden and the roses and the butterflies. He's got one thing on his mind. And he's thinking, I will tolerate all of this until I get to what I want. If he's a Muslim, you ask him, about his sister, he will say, I'll kill any guy who looks at her. If you want to marry someone, then you go in the right way, insha'Allah. Go through her father first, before you go through the girl. Why? My sisters, I'm talking to you now. Sisters, you've never been a man before. You don't understand how men think. Let your father do the work, insha'Allah. And obviously the fathers, I encourage you, to be a bit more courageous and find husbands for your daughters. Don't sit there and, you know, make it difficult. Open the doors for marriage, insha'Allah, and lower the dowry and go in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah. So the brother comes to the father and the father likes him. Then you meet the daughter and if you fall in love with her, alhamdulillah. But the other way, if you fall in love with each other, you come to ask for her hand in marriage and then the father says, over my dead body. What are you going to do then? You've fallen for each other. What are you going to do? Hmm? The boy is dreaming about her. She's dreaming about him. 
is the love of her life. She's the love of his life. That's what the shaitan tells you. What are you going to do? They start to cry. They start to this. They want to commit suicide. They ah. So they elope. They run away together. So he goes and marries her for two months. That's what happens, my sisters. And that's one of the reasons why divorces happen. He doesn't want you anymore. There are brothers who get married and they want to marry a second wife. In culture, you know, in Arab culture, for example, marrying a second wife, it's difficult. So what do they do? They go for converts to Islam. They marry them two months, three months down the track, and then they divorce them. This is haram. Haram to use and abuse. There are married couples who are stricken by this internet business and Facebook. And the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you this halal for you at home. And there are sisters who Allah has given you this halal man at home. But for some reason, curiosity gets the better of you and you go to search the world. And divorces occur as a result. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, you are only putting yourselves into harm. And our children are being neglected. Our children are being taken away by others. And they are being raised by other people. While the husband and wife are too busy with their desires.